Noah Junt here at Dinosaur Explore in Stone Mountain Park. Yeah! Welcome to Noah Junt. Let the good times roll. In this episode of our Georgia Travel Vlog, we are at Stone Mountain Park, located in Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is the most visited tourist attraction in Georgia. We made a visit here before, and the Dinosaur Explorer exhibit was closed. So we're making a return visit to check this attraction out. If you want to know what to do in Georgia, one of the most popular things to do in Atlanta is see Stone Mountain Park, which has the largest bass relief carving in the world, along with Stone Mountain Park Amusement Area, which currently features the animatronic dinosaurs at their Dinosaur Explorer attraction along with a lot of other fun family activities, which also includes a five-mile scenic train ride that takes about 30 minutes to complete that we'll be doing. So join us in this episode as we explore Stone Mountain Park, Georgia. This is the most popular Georgia tourist attraction, and if you're planning your Georgia vacation, check this video out. So here's a little flashback of when I was entering the park on my previous visit and what it looked like. And you can see it looks pretty interesting, but in October, on my return visit, whoa, they went all out with the October Halloween theme. And so they had all sorts of pumpkin carving decorations everywhere, generally following a fairy tale book theme and some other stories we're all familiar with. Even our T-Rex here is chomping down on a little... Pumpkin, so this is quite fun. So as we're walking towards the Dinosaur Explorer exhibit, they have jack-o'-lanterns hidden all throughout here. It's almost like a little bit of an Easter egg hunt because they have so many little uh, interesting things hidden around that you find and see all manner of different jack-o'-lantern and other pumpkin decorations throughout your stroll through the park. So it's got a really fun theme and there's a lot of kids and families out here really enjoying themselves. The last time I was here was virtually deserted. Um, it's not that crowded right now actually in this area, but there uh, definitely are a lot more people than there were the last time I visited. Uh, the restrictions have lifted somewhat. If you haven't seen my previous video, I will put a link to that at the end of this video so you can check it out when you finish this video. Look at this guy. He's having a good time. Ooh, little pterodactyl might swoop down and get us. Looks a little scary. Oh, but the dinatorium is still closed. I'm so sad. I still wanted to check this place out. At least they decorated it, but I'm a little sad that I can't go in there. Brontosaurus is over here still. You can see that last time. But then all of this section was locked up. I could just hear the noises of the dinosaurs going on. So I'm so excited we can finally go check this place out. And see what all those noises were going on inside here. I guess this is our time machine warp. Here we go. We're going back. But hey, wait. Where's Fred Flintstone? I'm not seeing anything but a lot of humans. No cave people. What's going on here? I don't know. I thought there were dinosaurs back here. It's all these humans. And not even any cave people. I mean, I thought Betty Rubble, Fred, and Barney were all going to be here. I don't know. What's going on? There's some little kids jumping out of eggs. But wait, hold on. Slow up. Here's some dinosaur eggs, maybe. These are pretty big. It's got to be a dinosaur. Oh, wait. Come up slow. This looks like an Ankylosaurus. I used to have one of these dangerous creatures as a kid on a plastic toy, but that one didn't move. They got that tail swinging. Look out. Ooh, they're dangerous. Ooh, this thing's a little scary. Look out. All these children might get bit. I don't know. Look at this vicious creature. Hmm. Well, it's a little crowded in here, certainly. So and They have all these other really cool exhibits where the kids can learn more stuff. And uh, the animatronic dinosaurs really seem to uh, get the kids to interact a lot. So I definitely would think this would be a great place to bring kids. And I wish when I was growing up we had cool moving dinosaurs like this. 
I mostly had pictures and little uh, plastic, uh, ah, they weren't even action figures, they were just stationary plastic molded dinosaurs. So these are pretty nifty looking. So this definitely could inspire some children's uh, imaginations and inspire them to study more history. Oh, this looks like a pretty cool thing, and they even have some dinosaurs I've never heard of. Ah, in my olden days, I think all we had were the uh, Brontosaurus, the Triceratops, the T-Rex, and Allosaurus. Just everything that was on the Land of the Lost. Now, I remember old Stegosaurus here. This is one of my old friends here. How's it going there, buddy? Having a good time there. So hey, if you love dinosaurs like I do, go ahead and destroy that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up and it really would help me with the YouTube algorithm. Comment below, let me know what your favorite dinosaur is. Oh, I also remember the duck-billed platypus. I don't think this is one of those though. Where's his name? Oh, here it is. Oh, my favorite dinosaur, the Triceratops. Um, now, this one I thought was broken because it had an eye that didn't really seem to uh, want to open or do anything. But then when I got closer and stood right in front of it, she started flirting with me a little bit, started winking at me. So, this is a little flirtatious Triceratops. So, let's see if I can get this eye to work. It just, uh, it's very hard to do. Got to know the secret, I guess. Gotta wave the right way. Oh, look, it's winking. It's winking at me. All right. So that was the uh, the one that was not quite uh, as easy to get to move as some of the other ones. Sometimes it's a little hard to figure out just the right spot to stand in to get the motion activated uh, sensor to make these dinosaurs move. It's a little uh, shifting back and forth. I think this one needs a little tune-up. He's kind of uh, not moving smoothly. A little, uh, little jittery rough movement there. I think uh, might be time for a little maintenance on this poor fellow. This T-Rex seems way less scary and moves a lot less than the one on the outside, so I'm not sure, maybe he needs a little uh, extra tune-up also.
The Allosaurus doesn't seem to do much either. I don't know what's going on here. Oh wait, it just moves its little uh, arm a little bit. Maybe that one needs a little more tune-up work. Something needs to be done with that one. Not very exciting with that. So overall, I would say these dinosaurs are pretty awesome, other than a couple of them that look like they need a little work. And there's so much here for kids to learn about and enjoy, so a great place for families. And there's still plenty more to be entertained with. <laughs> So that actually was way more fun than I thought it was going to be. It was almost like going back in time and being able to go to a dinosaur zoo with old uh, Fred Flintstone. So now we're going to walk back and go into the rest of the park and explore that and go on a little tour of that. So we'll walk past our scary T-Rex right here. This one was uh, definitely a lot scarier, made more noises than the one inside the enclosure. So we'll go through and check out. I'm not quite sure what all is open. Things are kind of hit or miss about what is open in the park right now during the pandemic time of October. So uh, definitely before you visit, check out their website. A lot of these attractions are seasonal. So you also need to reserve ahead of time for some of these things as they fill up fast. So actually uh, some of my friends that are here at the park the same time I am, they booked a ride with the Sky Ride for those trams, and they were already sold out by the time I attempted to also do the same. So they have a lot of gift shops here, though. Plenty of shopping here. There are no shortage of gift shops and attractions for people to go and buy things here in this park. So definitely a lot of stuff to see. And then uh, these seasonal decorations for the pumpkins are really entertaining. Uh, they definitely have done a fantastic decoration job here for the holidays. I would be curious to know what other holidays they do decorations like this for because they've done a really outstanding job getting in that holiday spirit. So it's very entertaining with uh, what they've done here. So if you happen to know what other seasons they decorate for, comment below and let us know. I'd really appreciate it. I'm sure all the other people watching this video would too. I would also really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up, destroy that subscribe button, and when you comment below, all of that really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and I really do appreciate it. And hey, I do work for tips, so if you could check out my Patreon link that'll be in the comment below, please check that out as well. And I really would appreciate it. There's some interesting restaurants around, some are open, some are closed, so Still seems a lot of the park is not completely open due to the pandemic situation. So as we keep walking, it seems more and more things are open the closer that we get to the mountain. So it's definitely very interesting in here. All of the children and adults that I've seen today all seem to be having a really fantastic time. So I don't know if it's the fact that people are just so glad to be able to get out of lockdown from the pandemic and get a little fresh air and some fun activities, or if it's just that much fun here for families. So I'm having a good time so far. So I would say it's uh, definitely due to the fact this is a pretty fun spot with a lot of interesting things to see and do. I'm not sure if the 4D theater is open over there. It does not look open though. So they have uh, all these interesting fairy tale themes and other story themes for almost all the buildings. So they've really done a great job decorating and all these random jack-o'-lantern pumpkins everywhere. Okay, now we're coming up to the train station area. So this has uh, quite a few things open down this way. It's a really uh, cool little area with quite a few little shops that we can go and explore. So they have the sweet shop right here that's got a lot of delicious looking candy. 
They have this great little uh, picnic area that looks like a beer garden, but I'm not sure if they sell beer or not in this park. So far, I would say I have not seen any advertisements for that, only for Coca-Cola products. All right, let's go on and check out what we can see in the sweet shop. So, we've got some uh, bottled drinks. It looks like a little candy corn. And there's a uh, little toy shop right there. Then they have some ice cream over here. And uh, then we have some kitchen area where they make some of their own desserts. So that's a good thing. It's like we have a nice little selection of some of their fudge and other items. And a uh, choice of all kinds of flavors of fudge. Ooh. And more candy right here. Oh, ho, ho. these all look nice. And we have some bagged candy items. It's like uh, hard candies and some uh, more hard candy. And a little taffy here, I believe. And then we've got some vacant shelves. It looks like either they sold out or they're not doing things due to the pandemic. Okay, now we're going to try to check out some of the rest of the area around here. That line is getting really long for the train. I don't know if we'll get on or not. We'll see. We're gonna do our best to get on the train ride, but that is a long line. Let's try to go into the toy store now, and uh, huh, I don't know. Can we get in this way? Oh, nope, they've got it locked, so we're gonna have to go walk around and go back into the sweet shop and go in through this way to get to the toy store, so. A good tip for the pandemic times, at least. The toy store is accessible through the sweet shop. Got some pretty cool little vehicles here. Ooh, little VWs, fire trucks, school buses. Ah, uh, let's see. Some other little items in here. Okay, so some sunglasses. Uh, those aren't toys, but I guess you might need them if you forgot your sunglasses or lost them otherwise. And some... Uh, balls other items over here I'm not sure what these toys are I'm not up to date on my toy selection anymore obviously I don't know what some of this stuff is anymore Ooh, what are these things there's some stuffed animals those are still uh, things I recognize looks like we have uh, some other little stuffed animals and hey some dinosaurs here I think or uh, chickens Chickens are dinosaurs, though, right? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. There's quite a selection of items over here. Some uh, stuffed snakes, it looks like. Uh, stuffed animal snakes. One of my friend's moms would not like that gift. Let's see. Hmm. Pink birds. I don't know what those do, really. Oh, these are pretty cool. Ooh, yes. Star Wars toys. I will take some of those. And uh, hmm, more sunglass things. And more stuffed animals. And, ooh, here we go. These are some cool action figures. I'll take some of these. And then cat guns. Oh, oh, oh yes. This is what I got as a kid. I'd always get the Daniel Boone hat, the uh, cat gun musket at Disney World. Those were the days. The cap guns of those days shot a little quart bullet at Disney World. So you'd get your musket. You could uh, crank down the little cork bullet in there and the cap would set it off and maybe uh, shoot the uh, little cork a few uh, inches. Oh, okay, so that was pretty cool in the toy store. Now let's go check out this little, uh, I think this is a little mallish area that has a concession slash food area in there. Okay, so didn't look like much was open, but here we are in line for the train. Ooh, this line is really long and moving really slow, so we have plenty of time to look around more. Fortunately, my group is going to be able to save my space in line while I walk about a little bit and explore more, because they do have another gift shop here we can check out. So, there's a lot of space inside of here, so this is a pretty good-sized gift shop. A lot of items, looks like a lot of hats, t-shirts... Other good souvenir items, so you can find a special gift for that special someone that needs a gift from your trip. And uh, lots of fun things here. And hey, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, destroy that subscribe button, and comment below and let us know what your favorite part of what we've seen so far is out of all of these activities. Although we still have a train ride to check out still. And wow, look at all this. Speaking of trains, 
Look at here, they actually have some train toys. This is the first place I've actually seen a train toy so far. So it's a lot of items in here. In my previous video on Stone Mountain, we visited their even larger, which I guess is their main gift shop. And I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one if you want to check that out. And hey, more candy. So you can get candy over here, but more candy on the other side. So a lot of the uh, t-shirts and mugs here seem to look very similar to the ones in the other gift shop. So you might need to look in both though. There's some things that are different between the two places. So uh, I will have that link at the end of this video if you want to check out our other adventure we had previously. But we missed out on the train ride of the Dinosaur Explorer last time. Now we're going to go get back in line for this train. This train thing is really popular. I didn't think there would be this many people in line waiting to get on the train ride. So there go the trams that you could do the sky ride with and my friends are actually still stuck on top of the mountain. They uh, have said they've been trapped for a long time and there's a huge line to get down. So a bit later we finally got moved up in the line enough to see the Adventure Golf, the great locomotive chase putt putt golf fun area. I never got to get up close to see much of that though unfortunately. Now we can see the train rules here. And then we have our departure time. So there are multiple times they depart and leave uh, during the times they're open. Make sure to check out that website and call to make sure you know when they're going. So when you buy your ticket, your seat is assigned and there's less seating for the pandemic. Excuse us. Huh? Yeah, this whole train is 81. The best seats are the ones facing the mountain. Unfortunately, I didn't get one of those. Speaking of old-timey European visitors, they love to the scenic beauty back here so much that regular stage coach uh, service came in 1825. And with that old tiny European visitors, we became old tiny European settlers as they started buying up lots of unsettled land. Even more opportunities came with the coming of the railroad in 1845. You see the sets put up over on the left. The old post office and the old schoolhouse on the right. It's very hard to see them unless you're right in front of them because of where the trees are. Between those, 
and the smaller stone building to the left again. Um, those made up basically the beating heart of the original Pebble Ridge town. So they started off as Foreman buildings. The uh, building on the left being his old house. They would host forays there, but it eventually became the town hall, the hotel. They took care of each of the buildings, took care of everything from education to religious services to a place to rest your head while you're looking for work in the quarry itself. Also standing the testament of time, we have our old passenger cars. Our covered cars unfortunately are no longer able to be used. However, when they or when they were, they were donated. Now we're no longer an active quarry, but you can find our stone is nearby as the Federal Reserve Bank here in Atlanta, as far away as the Capitol building in Havana. Uh, also further in, they'll go over all the procedures and the technological advancements that came from such a long working quarry. Though my favorite part of it is the listing of flora and fauna and how it came to be. Turns out a recovering quarry is quite the ecosystem. Guys, I know it is so tempting to get pictures, but I do need you to remain seated. My train jostles a lot as it comes to a stop and I don't want anybody falling over. Please remain fully seated. Please sit down. So we gave you a little abbreviated experience of the whole train tour there. The entire tour takes about 30 minutes to do. And if you ever do it, uh, hopefully they'll open up more seats as we get more out of the pandemic situation and you can get the better seat that faces the mountain. And hey, just like we destroyed that train ride, go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and comment below about what you thought about that train ride. So what we just went past, now the other side is facing the mountain. So you see the carving of the monument that is on the mountain here itself. So you can see the train just went right next to that. And we were looking the other direction up the hill to the rest of the area here. And then there goes some of the trams again, back up to the mountain and back down the mountain. And my friends are supposed to be on one of these coming down finally. So this entire time, they've been in line waiting to come down. They're a little unhappy about the long wait that it was to get down. Now in my previous video, I hiked up the mountain and I've got video at the top of the mountain if you want to see what it looks like at the top. Uh, so it seems like it might almost be faster to walk up and walk down than to take the tram when it's a busy day. This is a nice little park area though. They've got a lot of waterfalls and different things going on here. The train ride uh, was a good experience to be able to go all the way around it. But I think walking up the hike to the mountain is definitely a great challenge. If you're able to do it, that's probably one of the things you certainly want to do, but it does take a lot of time. So you probably would need more than one visit to do that here. So here's a nice little Coca-Cola carving jack-o'-lantern. They did a lot of great work with this. This is an interesting one. I don't know if that's a real pumpkin or not, though. What do you think? 
All right, look at this. This is supposed to be Pinocchio's will. There were so many people earlier, I couldn't do this. So I hope you like my special pose as I'm running from the will. So here we go after a full day at Stone Mountain. And I'm going to meet my friends at the Village Corner German restaurant for a little dinner. So check out my video for that. If you haven't seen that, I'll have a, a link to that in the upper right hand, the circle with the eye inside of it if you want to check that video out. So I had a really great time at Stone Mountain Park and thanks so much to everybody at Stone Mountain Park for making such an amazing experience. And to all of you out there, thank you so much for watching. And please destroy that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and do consider joining my Patreon program as I do work for tips. And thanks so much to all my Patreons out there. So make sure you tune in next time for more good food, good times, and good people. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you would just click on the little circle here with a picture of my head in there and subscribe to the Nola Jet channel, it would really help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you.